If you don't invest the necessary time into learning Chinese, it doesn't matter how good your method is. Time boxing is a wonderful way to get more done in less time. Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about one of the most persistent challenges in life, which is to get things done. And of course, since this is the Hacking Chinese podcast, we're going to talk about how to get things done in terms of learning Chinese. But what we talk about in this episode is equally applicable to other areas, which I will also talk about. I often say that there are three things you need to tweak if you want to get the most out of your learning. So the first one is efficiency. So this is how much gain you get per unit time. So some methods are better than others. You, for example, might learn more words using a certain method than another method, or some way of reading might actually teach you more about the language than some other kind of reading. So this is about efficiency. The next thing you can tweak is what you are learning or the content, because of course, if you focus on things that are genuinely useful, you will be able to do more with the Chinese compared to if you're learning things that aren't as useful. So a simple example of this, when it comes to vocabulary, would of course be to focus on the most common or the most frequently used Chinese characters and words in the context you are using the language. The final way you can upgrade your approach to learning Chinese is how much time you spend, because it goes without saying that if you don't spend any time, it doesn't really matter if you have the best method or if you're focusing on just the right things, because if you spend something like five minutes a day, you're going to make very slow progress regardless. And it could very well be that someone who spends hours more than you do will learn more, even if their method is worse and even if they are focusing on slightly the wrong things. So how many hours you study is actually very important, and it might even be more important than the other factors we talked about. And this is of course connected to motivation as well. If you are strongly motivated and you think that learning Chinese is the most interesting thing in life right now, well, then you will probably spend lots of time. But this is rarely something you can keep up forever, and there will also be times when motivation flags and you need some tricks to keep going. And that is exactly what we will talk about today. We're going to talk about a method called time boxing that is an excellent way to get more things done in less time. And I mean that quite literally. So by limiting the amount of time we use, we can get more done. And this sounds a bit counterintuitive, but it is true. And let me explain why. Most people know that having a deadline can sometimes make you do more than if you don't have one, but we also know that if the deadline is far away, it doesn't have much impact on what I'm doing today. So having a deadline next Thursday doesn't really make me do anything differently today, but it will make me do something differently, say, next Wednesday, because the deadline is approaching and I don't have time to procrastinate. If I want to get this thing done, I need to do it now. It also seems to be the case that the more time we have available to do something, the less efficient we are, i.e. the more we procrastinate, maybe we choose to do other things first, and we don't necessarily use more time to get more done, we just find other ways of using that time that are more interesting. One way we can use these insights to get more done is to set very short deadlines. So not this afternoon, but maybe the next 30 minutes. And this would then be a time box. And time boxing is simply about setting a specific amount of time where you are supposed to do a certain activity. The duration can of course be longer than 30 minutes, so if you are planning a longer project, you can say that this activity is supposed to take this long and so on, and this is more akin to normal project management. But what I want to talk about here is the short-term time boxing, say 30 minutes or less, that is most relevant for language learners. And if you haven't tried out time boxing before, I strongly suggest that you do, and I will suggest how you can do this later in this episode. But this method is so good that it feels like magic sometimes, and out of all the time management tools and approaches that I've tried over the years, this is the one I come back to most and also one I use on a daily basis. So at its core, time boxing is simply setting a specific amount of time and then doing a specific activity for that amount of time. 
And this sounds very simple. I mean, after all, everybody can say things like, yeah, I spent 15 minutes reviewing flashcards, or I read my graded reader for 20 minutes yesterday, or something like that. But this is not timeboxing just because you are able to give a time. Timeboxing is when you set the time period in advance, you use a timer, you start the timer, you do the activity, and you keep on doing it until the alarm rings and the time is up. So a few examples from everyday life might be something like setting a timer for 15 minutes to tidy up your home, or spending 10 minutes checking out emails you should have checked last week, or finally spending 20 minutes researching something you've been meaning to check out for a long time and have just neglected. When it comes to learning Chinese, it could be something as simple as trying to find a new interesting podcast for 15 minutes, or reading a graded reader for 20 minutes, or spending 10 minutes reviewing vocabulary and tracing errors you've made recently. Like I said, this sounds nothing like the magic I promised, so let me explain why this works, and then I will also go through some things you need to keep in mind when you try this yourself, and that will make it work better for you. So the first advantage is that starting a timer gives you a clearly defined beginning. For most people, the hardest part of getting things done is to get started in the first place. Once you are going, it's not that hard to keep going. So if you can take that first step, the rest will follow naturally. Personally, I like using a physical timer, and I usually set it to somewhere between 10 and 30 minutes, depending on the task. And I will talk more about how to figure this out later. The point is that when you start the timer, you also start engaging in the activity you decided on in advance. The second benefit of timeboxing is that working with a close deadline focuses the mind. And this I have already covered, because if you know that you have 30 minutes to do something, well, you can't really procrastinate because then obviously you won't get it done. And maybe this is connected to a deadline you have later, next week, next year, or maybe a long-term goal for learning Chinese. But the deadline is here and now, and it's maybe 20-30 minutes away. The third advantage is that having a clearly defined end makes daunting tasks more manageable. So if you have some big task ahead of you, even if it's something you could in theory do in a day, such as clearing, say, a thousand flashcards from your flashcard review queue or something like that, that feels very unmanageable and a bit daunting, to be honest, it would take many, many hours to do. But if you know in advance that you're only going to spend 20 or 30 minutes doing this, that feels much more manageable, and it will still take you towards that long-term goal. But the focus is not on the long-term, it's on the short-term, it's on the right now. The fourth benefit is that deciding in advance when to stop gives you control. I already said that timeboxing is great for getting started, that is maybe the main advantage, but sometimes you have activities where you actually need to stop as well. It could be an activity that could take way too long, or maybe where you're afraid that you will waste time. For example, if you're doing some kind of research or you want to find a new podcast or a new graded reader, maybe the results won't be that much better if you spend two hours compared to 20 minutes. So setting a timer for 20 minutes and then being done with it when you reach those 20 minutes is actually better because then you can spend the rest of the time actually studying Chinese instead of just looking around for ways of learning Chinese. The fifth and the final advantage with timeboxing is that it feels good to have completed what you set out to do. So when the alarm goes off, you can celebrate a small victory. And of course, maybe you don't need one small victory to reach your big victories, but at least you have accomplished something and you did exactly what you said you would do. And doing that over and over, i.e. succeeding in small goals you set for yourself, is very good for building self-confidence and trust in your ability to get more things done and maybe more complex or difficult things as well. Those were some advantages with timeboxing, and there are of course many variants of this, and some of them have fancy names, like the Pomodoro technique, which is essentially what I have described here, but with some extra parameters. I don't think there is much value in discussing different approaches here, and what they are called, and is this method better than that one, and is that specific instantiation of this method better than another one, but I do think it's worthwhile to discuss how to tweak this general approach so that it works for you. Like I said earlier, I've used timeboxing a lot and still use it, and so here I have collected some advice that I have to give if you want to try this out. First, define your activity clearly in advance. 
And clearly here doesn't mean you need to know what you are going to do every single minute or second of the time period, but it does mean that if you start the timer and then need to immediately ask yourself what you're supposed to do, you're not doing it right. You should at least have a clear idea of what to do so you can get started the second you press the button. The button press is meant to start the timer and your activity at the same time. Next, you should experiment with duration or the size of the time boxes. So normally you can see things from 10 to 30 minutes being recommended for single sessions. And I think that makes sense, but I also think it makes sense to start towards the lower end of this range. So start with 10 minutes and if that feels okay, so after 10 minutes you felt like, yeah, I could easily have done five more minutes or 10 more minutes, feel free to add a little bit of time. But don't do the opposite because it's always better to win and then do something again and make it slightly harder than it is to try something really hard and then fail and then maybe not try again. The time here also depends on what kind of activity you're engaged in, and this is something where it's hard to give blanket advice, but you just need to figure out that some activities you can do for 10 minutes and others you can do for 30, and it's completely different depending on what it is. My third advice is to use a physical timer. At least for me, it feels more real to start a time boxing period by pressing a real physical button, and it also makes it easier for me to get started compared to if I do this with a phone. Maybe I'm the only one for whom this works, but I think it could also be helpful for some of you. Next, make sure to stop when the timer goes off. As I've already said, the greatest value for most people with timeboxing lies in the fact that it allows you to get started, but it's also important to consider how you end. Don't dilute the method's effectiveness by working past the time you've set. Instead, take a short break and reevaluate what you are doing, and maybe your decision will be to set another time period and continue where you left off. And I normally don't find this difficult to do, but if you do, you can always spend the last, say, 10 seconds or just spend an extra 10 20 seconds making some notes of what you were doing so you can pick it up again easily in the next time box. My next piece of advice is to take breaks. And this is kind of built into the model because if you spend 30 minutes doing something or 20 minutes doing something, then you have an excellent opportunity to take a break between sessions. This is meant to be highly focused work and that is quite demanding. It requires a lot of energy and a lot of focus. So relaxing a little bit between sessions is great. It allows you to assimilate what you did in the previous session, and it also allows you to calm down a bit and focus on the next session. If you try this at work, or if you indeed treat learning Chinese as your occupation, then spending, you know, eight hours spread out over 16, 30 minute sessions doesn't really work unless you insert lots of breaks, because this really is rather demanding. Indeed, if you use many time boxes in a single day, I strongly suggest you insert longer breaks between every third, fourth, or maybe fifth time box, depending on their length and their intensity. My final advice is that you try this out with everyday chores and activities. It's easier to do that than with learning Chinese to begin with, I think. And things like tidying up in your office or your home or other household chores are excellent activities to try this out. And you can experiment with duration, how you specify what you're supposed to do, what kind of timer you use, and so on. This also works great with coworkers, family, and friends. So don't suggest that you tidy up the apartment together with the family until everything is done. Instead, you set a timer for everyone for 25 minutes and see how much you can get done in that time. And you'll be amazed at how much that actually is. So your mission for this week is to try out timeboxing. And you can try it with everyday activities or you can try it with learning activities. It doesn't really matter, even though, of course, the goal with this podcast is to help you get more done when it comes to learning Chinese. As you experiment, pay attention to what works and what doesn't. So, for example, when it comes to reviewing vocabulary, you might figure out that, yeah, 10 minutes is as far as I can go before I lose interest or start thinking about other things. And then you just keep your time boxes at 10 minutes. That's fine. But then you might also realize that when you are reading, say, a graded reader, well, then 10 minutes isn't really enough. You don't get into the story and you need at least 20 or even 30 minutes. And then you just use 30 minute time boxes for that. But like I said earlier, I suggest you start with shorter times and then expand rather than doing the opposite. So let's zoom out a bit before I wrap up this episode, because I do think that long term goals for learning Mandarin are very important. They inform your method, they also influence what you focus on, and much more. 
But if you keep focusing on your long-term goals, it will feel like you're not moving. It's as if when you're out walking, you set a goal to reach the horizon, and every step then will not make that much of a difference in how close you are to that goal. But if you look down at your feet, you will of course see lots of things changing all the time, and it will be very apparent that you're moving forward. So don't think about the thousands of miles you might have ahead of you before reaching your goal. Instead, think of the steps you're going to take in the next 10 to 30 minutes. When you think about it this way, getting started really isn't that hard, and then getting things done becomes easy. Just do it. Take that first step, and you'll be surprised at how far it can take you. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies!